Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. This is Dennis Sperling, and I'd like to welcome you all back. Um, as you guys know, I'm an attorney in Houston, Texas, but more importantly, I'm also a good friend with the late, great Kevin Samuels. And so it pains me to see all that's going on in the news media with the different podcasts and the different individuals uh, who are uh, attempting to disparage his legacy by making all these wild accusations. Now, um, First, as you guys remember, even during his life, they tried to disparage his name. They said things like he was gay, right? And for almost the duration of his career, his competitors attempted to, to allude um, to that because of his fancy way of dressing and his, his fashionable style and his mannerism. They said he's gay, right? Keeping in mind that this is a man who had been married and divorced twice and has a grown daughter. I know no one ever truly knew uh, or thought Kevin was gay. They just said that, right? They, they were making this statement. Uh, his distractors did this, his competitors did this, and, and they did it because they felt the effectiveness, uh, the effectiveness of his work. These people were largely jealous of his success. Their motive in trying to, w w was trying to emasculate him, right? And in doing so, they were trying to undermine his message. In the history of the United States, emasculating black men has been something that has been common practice. They did it back on the slave plantations. They referred to that as buck breaking, right? And what you saw happening to Kevin Samuels during his lifetime with these allegations and questioning his sexuality, that was simply more attempts at buck breaking. They were trying to emasculate him. See, his adversaries, largely black women and jealous men, right? They did that, why? Why, they, they did it because of his success. They were taking a page out of the so-called white supremacist racist playbook. And these type of black folks oftentimes pretend to be pro-black, but in reality, they're just jealous, hateful people, and they actually are, 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 are worse off sometimes than the typical racist. They truly don't want to see black people succeed. They're like crabs in the bucket. They're the crabs in the bucket that are pulling the other crabs down. If you get too high in the bucket, they say things like, oh, you, they try to undermine your credibility by saying, oh, you're not down or you talk white, or uh, or you forgot where you came from. In the case of Kevin Samuels, because of his success, they wanted to try to label him gay and therefore, therefore emasculate him. Now keep in mind, okay, this wasn't a bunch of screaming, raving uh, white folks uh, calling Kevin Samuels gay. This was this is his own black people doing this. His own black people trying to emasculate him and thereby undermine his message. However, the circumstances surrounding his death, i.e. him dying in the arms of a fit, beautiful, inspirational, loving Latino woman that he had contemplating marrying and having children with, what that did was that undermined and destroyed that entire narrative. Ironically, Kevin has mentioned several times in his podcast in the past that calling a straight black man gay is the way in which they emasculate him. If these haters really thought Kevin was gay, they would have just, they, they, they would have just, uh, they wouldn't have said that. They wouldn't, they, they, they don't do that because if so, then that would be considered homophobic. But because they knew it, they knew he wasn't, that's why they began to use that. Now, since they couldn't emasculate him during his life, right? Now they're trying to do it at his death. Now, how were they trying to do that? 
They're trying to create a negative stereotype that he was broke. The truth is Kevin Samuels had amassed more wealth than the owners of many of these media publications that are making these foolish allegations. And many of these so-called pundits on YouTube that are making these serious allegations and pontificating as to what his total net worth was. For example, Fred over at Media Takeout, according to the internet, is worth only $10 million. Kevin Samuels turned down a $10 million podcast deal because he already had that and he knew he could make that 10 times over. Kevin said uh, he kept his financial status very close. Those of us who knew him and knew him well recognized that he was pretty damn cheap or could be. <laughs> when it came to spending things, spending money on things like dinner and whatnot, he was pretty cheap. But as far as his fancy watches and cars and suits, he recognized those as investments, spending money on that because he knew he could get more money in return for that. Look at the type of cars he drove. Look at the selection of watches that he had. Uh, his, he had a half a million dollar watch collection. You see? So, however, if you, the thing is, um, if you go out with Kevin, you don't expect him to reach for your wallet, his wallet. He's just not going to do that. Um, and I've had a couple occasions to have dinner with him. And it didn't matter if you're a man or a woman. He wasn't going for his credit card. You were going to be going for your credit card. But see, the thing is, while you were sitting there at that five or six hundred or a thousand dollar dinner, Kevin would be talking and he would teach you uh, how he mastered the algorithm. He would talk about business. He would talk about how the industry works. He would talk to you about the plans that he had for the future. This is the thing. So the information that he shared with you was more and better than what you could get in a um, in a classroom, in a university classroom. For about two or three hours in Miami at this expensive restaurant, Kevin broke down so much information about the algorithm. He, he broke down so much information about his plans, about what he planned to do, about how he planned to move forward uh, in his business career. And, you know, that information that I gathered at that time was worth over a million dollars. I wasn't the only one there. Melanie King and my lovely fiance were there with me. This is what we learned. OK, but but what I'm saying is when you talk to his friends and you, his family, they'll tell you just how successful he was. At the end of the day, Kevin recognized it was lonely at the top. And what he wanted to do was bring his friends along with him. In this regard, he was very, a very generous man. And at least that, at least with his associates and his friends. And what he did was he gave them all the knowledge that they needed to succeed. Now his haters are trying to say he died with less than a thousand dollars to his name. They based this on a very slick and cunningly written article that came out of the gossip website owned by Fred, whose parents are from Uganda, meaning he's a black man and he should know better than spread these rumors about other black folks. That, that gossip column, you guys know it, uh, media takeout. Now, if you read the, 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 the pertinent part of the article, it says as follows. According to the friend, Kevin Samuel's family has been uh, trying to identify all his assets and has only been able to locate less than $1,000. Now, I want you to keep in mind this. Kevin died on Thursday, May 5th, 2022. This article was printed and published on Saturday, May 7th, 2022. Now think about that. You just died yesterday and your so-called friend is looking for your assets today and then goes on and reports your financial business to the press tomorrow. First thing is that so-called friend is not a friend of Kevin Samuels. And on top of that, Kevin's mother nor his best friend since childhood, Jeff, who is, is working with his mother to take care of all of Kevin's financial business, they don't know anything about this so-called friend from media that Media Takeout uses as a source. Kevin was cautious with his friends. He picked his friends like he picked his fragrances, only the best. The thing we have in common is that none of us who consider ourselves friends would ever make such disparaging remarks to some gossip column, especially something as untrue as that. See, the second thing is, that's not even enough time to determine how much someone owns. 
I'm an attorney. And when I'm looking for a defendant and I'm trying to figure out what he owns, we do something called a fine. We do a, get a financial report that sometimes takes weeks to come back. The point is this, Kevin. Uh, the point is what they're trying to do is suggest that Kevin died broke. And by doing so, they're implying that he had poor judgment. They're implying that uh, he was unable to take care of his responsibilities or his obligations. In this regard, this is another way in which they are trying to emasculate this man. They tried to do it. As, as I said earlier, they tried to call him gay. That was an attempt to emasculate this black man. Now they're trying to say he was broke. This is an attempt to emasculate, emasculate this black man. And they're hoping to undermine his message, which was purposeful and poignant. Now, another allegation they're using is suggesting that he, to suggest that he died broke, is that his family has set up a GoFundMe account. Now, keep in mind, and this is, I'm still referring to this media uh, takeout uh, article. The, 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 headlines, the headlines just says, family sets up GoFundMe account. But as you read through the article, it says this, quote unquote, the friend also told us that the family is contemplating setting up a GoFundMe to raise money to give the high value man a proper funeral. Now, the article itself folds in under its own weight because the headline, in the headline, it alleges that the GoFundMe account has been set up, in, in, indicating that it's already been done. But in the actual article, it says the family is contemplating setting up a GoFundMe account. Here's the problem with that. Kevin had a mother and a daughter. That's it. He wasn't married at the time. He didn't have any other children. That's his family. His daughter is going to be his only heir. Who else are you talking about? There is no one else. And, 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 and Miss Beverly, his mother, is definitely not contemplating a GoFundMe account, period. And anybody who says they've set one up for him, they're lying and GoFundMe needs to shut that down. See, most viewers don't get to that last line in the article where the statement is made. Instead, they'll just go away with the notion that his family is setting up a GoFundMe account, the point being to establish the narrative that Mr. Kevin Samuels died broke in hopes of emasculating him and thereby undermining his message to the masses, which has been so effective. Now, another subtle way of alleging that Kevin Samuels is broke, and this is more subtle, right, at the, that it broke at the time of his death, is by making the statement that the apartment or letting the narrative seek that his apartment wasn't in his name. Now, here's the thing. The apartment that we're referring to is one where Kevin was living that cost nearly $8,000 a month to live in. Those who follow Kevin realize that he had just moved to Atlanta a few months back. It makes no sense to buy a house. It makes sense to rent an apartment, especially since he indicated that he had planned to return to New York where he once worked. Those of you guys who follow my page and follow his page know we were just up in New York with MTR and the lead attorney, right? So it makes sense to somebody like this with this amount of money who's moving about and doing different things and making money. It makes sense that he would not want to buy a house. It also makes sense that he would want to have an apartment. Now, here's the thing. You dare not say Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, was broke, even though he, he, he's not only does he not have an apartment, but he says he moves from hotel to hotel and has no established residence. We assume that this man who has amassed over a billion, a hundred billion dollars, uh, needs to be mobile and not be tied down. But when it comes to Kevin Samuels, our brother, who we've watched make 40 and $50,000 a night in super chats, he doesn't get that exception. It's ridiculous to think that Kevin Samuels, who's received thousands and thousands of dollars a day from his followers and subscribers and the members of his different organizations is broke, right? Or in some sort of financial peril or financial debt. What do you, what do you, what you're looking at as a self, uh, as a self-made man, a self-made multimillionaire who has, a, who has amassed an inordinate amount of wealth in a relatively short period of time using this new technology that has only been around for two years. Let me explain. You two, and as YouTubians know, YouTube just installed Super Chat or Super Sticker or what is now 
the super heart system. More, and what that does is it allows folks like yourself to contribute when you hear something that you like, right? We know that. We understand that, right? This idea is a new innov innovation, relatively speaking, because it's only been around for two years. Kevin Samuels was the first one of the manosphere, specifically the black manosphere, to truly capitalize on that innovation. So as a result, he did what? He literally became a multimillionaire overnight. Most of you will never know that experience of being new rich. You'll literally... Uh, you, when you literally have money everywhere and all your issues and problems of the past have vanished overnight. But along with that, this new rich comes new problems. Problem number one is you got all this money and you don't know what to do with it. Do with it. Problem number two is you have all this money and you don't know what to do with it. <laughs> OK, do I invest it? Do I save it? Um, uh, should I buy things that are all the things that I wish for? And then, of course, comes, uh, you know, everybody asking you for something and willing to give nothing. What comes along with being new rich is the expectation of others that you will give them some, some, some money. Because in reality, uh, they treat your newfound wealth as though you didn't really earn it. They don't appreciate the fact that you worked extremely hard and mastered your craft to earn it. So in return, what do they want? They want you to give them some of it. And if you don't give them some of it, you're a bad person. Many of you have had that experience. And the first thing that happens when you become rich overnight is the people around you begin to see you differently. And there's, there's this saying, poor people have poor friends. Rich people, it's difficult to have poor friends. Why? Because they're, they're better, um, their worldview is not the same as yours. Your worldview has changed. Whereas a working man who's making a, a regular sum of money you know, he's concerned about paying his light bill. A man who's worth tens of millions of dollars is more concerned about paying the IRS. Uh, he, he's concerned about them getting that 30 or 40 percent cut, which amounts to millions of dollars. Uh, whereas people who are working class, they can go to their neighbor's house and visit. Both of them are equally the same financially speaking. Right. You give me some cheese, I'll give you some milk. You loan me ten dollars the next week, I'll pay you back. You help me change my flat tire. You know, you want to borrow a cup of sugar. That's fine. However, if you're dealing with somebody who's super rich, they have to even protect their location of where they live because friends and family will come by. And can you imagine? Can you imagine the life that Kevin Samuels has had to experience? Can you imagine if everyone knew where he lived? If his name was his address was easily found on the address or in the telephone directory? On the internet, all the types of people that would drop by, all the old friends, the new friends, the family. Can you imagine what his life would be like? It would be nearly impossible to live, to live, right? You'd have people showing up saying things like, not can I borrow a cup of tea, but can you pay my daughter's tuition, right? You have the old buddies coming back from out of nowhere, asking you for loans so they can pay their house notes. This is the reason why... Kevin Sanders decided he needed to remain mobile, right? This is the reason why he didn't want to do what? He didn't want his name on the apartment. Makes sense to me for privacy purposes, for security purposes. After becoming a multi-billionaire, a multi-millionaire, you know, being popular and famous worldwide, he needed a place where he could seek refuge. It makes sense, right? This is why his name was not on his apartment. Right. A place where he could escape the eyes of the media, having a, an apartment somewhere that was safe and beautiful and clean to his liking. Right. Somewhere somewhere he his safety and security was guaranteed his privacy so that he can work on his, his projects and his and just enjoy his his time. But see, according to these these newspaper newspaper articles and these podcasters, somehow this multimillionaire, by having his apartment in someone else's name, is indication that he died broke. Mind you, most financially astute people will put their homes in their corporate in corporate names anyway. They do that. We get that, right? And they do it for tax purposes and, and to help save money. In addition, uh, they create another level of privacy between themselves and the public. What Kevin Samuels was doing by having an apartment in someone else's name actually makes sense if you understand from a person's perspective like himself. It's not like when you put your 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 phone bill in your mama's name. It's not like when you put your gas bill in your baby's name. 
That was some Pookie. Those are Pookie and Ray Ray problems. Kevin Samuels had high value man problems, right? That's the difference. But again, according to the media, his apartment, right? His apartment. He was must have been broke, right? He must have. That's why he put his name, his put his apartment in somebody else's name. Again, this is another way of attempting to emasculate a black man by saying that he was broke. Now, here's the thing. I want to speak to black people right now. All right? Hit the number one button if you're in here. Let me know you guys are in here. Matter of fact, hit the KS button. Hit KS for the legacy of Kevin Samuels because we're talking about him. Right? If you appreciate this, if you appreciate this conversation, hit the KS button. I want to, But I want to talk to black people right now. Right? I want to speak to black women. I don't want any of Kevin Samuels fans to be offended. I don't want you to be offended. I know you got a lot of Kevin Samuels fans in here who are watching this broadcast because you miss him and you love him. Hit the KS button, right? But right now I want to talk to black people. And I want you to hear me out very carefully because this is very important. Kevin Samuels geared his podcast to black people, but the applications and teachings um, on image and, 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 and marriage and relationships, those are universal. And, and they include everyone in that conversation. But this particular topic, I want to talk to black people. I want you to notice something for me, black people. Notice that Kevin Samuel's harshest critics are those of the black elite and, and, and the intellectuals. And they're the ones who were his enemies or adversaries when he was alive, the PhDs, the, the owner of this, the JDs, the, the master degrees. Those people, look at them. If you search through Media Takeout's website, you will see that multiple art, there are multiple articles there disparaging his name and reputation. Now, the owner of that company is a black lawyer of African descent, so we know he's a black man, and he attended an Ivy League university, right? These PhDs, these JDs. Now, these are the same people who profess their love for black people and that they're doing for black people and they're keeping it down. They're keeping it, keeping it hood. They're keeping it real. But I want you to see how they respond to a black man who came from amongst us, who came from the dark corners of the internet, who basically came from the grassroots. Kevin Samuels was an intelligent man. He intended, attended college, but he wasn't degreed. As you guys have heard him say, he had to drop out of college because of cancer. He was unable to finish college. He attended, but he was unable to finish. Thus, he didn't get that stamp of approval. On top of that, he didn't go any further beyond that. He didn't get the PhDs and the JDs. So in this regard, according to this elite, these elite, he's an outsider. And I want you to notice how these intellectuals are now trying to debase Kevin Samuel's arguments and his logic and his reasoning now that, he's dead, now that he's dead, not by challenging his ideas and thoughts directly. Rather, they're questioning whether or not this brilliant man who was well known to be a multimillionaire was broke or poor at the time of his demise. So this cowardly roundabout way of attacking this man's character is what you see playing out. And it's being done by these black intellectuals. Now, these same black intellectuals, they teach you to complain about white people and Arabs and Asians and anybody else who comes to the black community and benefits and accumulates wealth selling black folks things, either services or food. However, what you find is these same black intellectuals now attacking this black man for doing what we all wish we could do. And that has become independently rich and successful and done within a lawful manner. The same black people attacking Kevin Samuels by questioning his financial status, are supposed to be the black elite and the well-to-do, the thought leaders and the knowledgeable, the educated. This is them. See, the truth is, and let's get down to it, the truth is Kevin Samuels died richer than any of them ever will be. And his daughter and his mother and his grandchildren are going to reap the benefits of his brilliance for generations to come. Kevin Samuels answered the question of generational wealth, and he did it inside of two years. This is what this man did. So my question is, 
why are these black men specifically, these black men intellectuals, why are they attacking the legacy of this black man? And the reason is, short and sweet, they're off code. Ain't that what y'all say? The off code, they're off code. Now, I'm talking to black folks right now. I know we got some other folks in here. But this conversation is for black folks. Y'all had the first quarter. This is, a, this is the second quarter. They're off code, black folks. And how do I know? Well, a long time ago, when I was a young man, a young child, I remember an interview given by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Now, there's a word they're afraid to say. And this was after he helped Jesse Jackson run for president. Jesse Jackson had begun to publicly denounce the minister. He, would, he had publicly denounced the minister for an attack, uh, uh, for uh, some statements that the minister had made. Now, Minister Farrakhan's followers kept asking him to respond to Jesse Jackson's statements, but, but the minister never will. He never would. And I wondered about it. why. Why wouldn't he do that? Why wouldn't he use his great oratory skills to put Jesse Jackson in his place? I don't know. But I learned by watching this play out in the news media from watching the response the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave, why you shouldn't attack another black man in public. I, I learned. He said, because disparaging the reputation of another black man, by doing that, you're disparaging your own reputation. You open the door for people from other cu cultures and groups to attack you. So if you disagree with a black man who is a public figure and you yourself a public figure, you should take that conversation behind closed doors. But under no circumstances should you be attacking your dead black brother, Kevin Samuels. That's my whole point. So when you have all these so-called thought leaders, these PhDs, these JDs, these men who own these companies, these men who are supposed to be well respected in the black community, when they have, when you, when they have, when you see them attacking another black man who has no criminal record, who was working hard, who was intelligent, who carried himself in a dignified manner, when you see them attacking him, understand that they are off code. And here's the thing, if we could tear down a brother like Kevin Samuel after he's dead, then that means none of us are safe. And what I want you guys to understand is that this is a good lesson for black folks. People of other cultures do the same thing. And we need to begin to do that. You're off code. So you so-called so pro-blackity blacks, you love black folks, you're attacking another black man in public, and all that's happening is what? You're making yourself a target. Now, I want to talk to some other group here. And this is our the group that all of us are part and members of, those of us here who are on YouTube. I want to talk to the men of the Manosphere community, the Black Manosphere specifically. The problem with most of these so-called elite intellectual Blacks is that they are truly blue pill simp drones, and they are beholden to the matriarchy of Black women. They have to toe the line and act as attack dogs for the misandrists because they're afraid to go against black women. They're afraid of being slapped around by these strong black women, literally afraid. Now, I'm going to ask you something this, and, and, and you men from you other groups, you're welcome to chime in on this. As a man, how can you respect a group of men who are afraid of their own women? How can you? Now, do you brothers want black America? Do, do you want you want you wonder why we as black black men don't get the respect that we're supposed to get? It's because not only our women, but the rest of the world sees us as being run by our women. The loud talk, uh, uh, the the threats to put you back in your play, the put downs, uh, all of this. There's no other group of men in the, in the world that allow their women to publicly humiliate them like that. Kevin Samuels, on his nightly podcast, was trying to change that. And the last thing, right, that the status quo, the last thing uh, that the status quo wants, those who benefit from the status quo, the last thing they want is change. See, he was forcing through his nightly broadcast, he was forcing black men to step their game up work harder, dress better, carry themselves with dignity and respect, 
uh, and, and most importantly, what he taught us in real time was how to force these lovely ladies to respect you as a man. He knew when to cut them off and, and he knew when they started acting too manly. This is what I'm saying. These black male elite uh, uh, thought leaders, right? They refer to that as misogyny or sexism. And my question to you is, when does a man taking care, taking care of himself and asserting himself like a man and speaking up for himself and not allowing people to disrespect him and commanding respect for himself, when, when is that man labeled a misogynist? Nowhere else but in the black community. Because why? Because we allow it. Kevin Samuels, on the other hand, didn't allow it. And this is the thing that the black manosphere and Kevin Samuels and the rest of the folks here in the grassroots on YouTube are trying to change. Being men, asserting yourself, speaking up for yourself. See, the status quo is not working for black men. Black America has failed because black men are no longer cooperating, right? This is where we are. This is why you have men, SYSBM, dating out. This is what you see. And these same failed philosophies that these so-called elite thought leaders have made their life off of, that they, they built they built entire schools and academies off of it. Kevin Samuels and the Black Manosphere have debunked a lot of that. And therefore, they are attacking Kevin Samuels because now, because why? And you know where I'm going, because it's hurting their wallets. That's why you see all these scholars and professors and so-called academics and preachers attacking Kevin Samuels in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> they're attacking his legacy. All these panda bears and simps are attacking Kevin Samuels because they feel if they can tear down his legacy, then, then they can prevent anybody else from coming up behind him and, 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 and continuing forward with this conversation that is so needed. See, they're insiders and they benefit from being inside. Their livelihood depends on you listening to them and depending on them for advice. That said, these personal attacks, they're petty. They're spreading rumors about a dead man and his financial well-being after his death. How can you trust anyone, any of these so-called intellectual thought leaders that will attack another black man before his body is even laying in the ground? What this demonstrates to me is that these so-called thought leaders are not truly thought leaders and they're not even leaders. They're just ego-driven, overly sensitive individuals who we've been forced to listen to for decades. They don't like it because Kevin Samuels has outshined them during their life. And so now what they're trying to do is smear and dirty his legacy after his death. They, by alluding that he died broke, which is the furthest thing from the truth, they're attempting to undermine his credibility and his thoughts and his philosophy and his teachings. By, by basically pointing to them, hey, look, he died broke, and therefore he's a failure. This is, again, another attempt to emasculate this black man. It's happening right before your eyes, right? And it's been happening since the first black man was brought to these shores in chains. This is butt-breaking. This is emasculation. These black people are willing to do this publicly, and they should be ashamed of themselves especially those of you who purport to know the history of black men in this country and all we've had to deal with. You guys are nothing more. They're nothing, this elite group, these, those who are attacking, they're nothing more than tools and agents of the dominant society as it is right now. And they're, they're using the little knowledge that they have, the information that they've learned to tear down this black man. That's all that's happening. Kevin Samuels is no longer an individual. Kevin Samuels is now representative of all black men. He is a proxy for all black men. And this same group of black elites who are disparaging Kevin Samuels in these newspapers and podcasts and television stations talk, you're going to be next, black man. You, you're next. And as far as you black women, they're going to be talking about your black sons next along with your fathers and your husbands. So don't let these narcissistic, ego-driven, jealous, 
pseudo intellectuals to destroy this man without fighting back. Because if you allow them to destroy him, they'll be destroying you next or your sons. This is where we are. Hit the KS button if you appreciate the legacy of Kevin Samuels. Make sure you do that. Hit the KS button. Again, this fight will not last long. These people are not looking for a fight. They're looking for a victim. And who's the easiest person to pick on? Somebody that's no longer with us. Look what they're trying to do. They even tried to besmirch the name of Brother Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. They're trying to allege that Brother Malcolm X was gay. They say Martin Luther King cheated on his wife. Well, his wife has never said he cheated on her. And that's between them. And even if he did, why are you bringing it up 50 years later? If, the nothing, if for nothing else but to tear this brother's name down. That's what's going on. Hit the KS button for the legacy of Kevin Samuels. Hit the KS button if you appreciate what he did. Hit the KS button if you promise to look through some of his videos before they tear him down or take them down. They're trying to flag all the man's videos. This is how much they hate Kevin Samuels, these intellectuals. <clears throat> these members, these misandrists, these lovely ladies. Hit the KS button. Make sure you do that. They always try to tear down our leaders. We see the white media doing it often. But now we have our own black people doing it, our so-called intellectuals doing it. Alleging that this man is broke, are you kidding me? Did you not see his podcast from the night before he passed away? Have you not recognized that this man was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a week? And you're saying he has left and some so-called friend of the family told you that he only had a thousand dollars somewhere a day after he died. How would you know? <clears throat> How would you know where his money is? Think about that. But they put this out. <clears throat> they put this message out. They put this narrative out as publication to try to emasculate this brother. If you guys understand what I'm talking about, just, I mean, we see it happening all the time. If it's, they, they, they love to try to put black men in dresses in Hollywood. They love to see black men crying on national TV, begging and pleading, oh, you never seen Kevin Samuels crying. Oh, they disrespected me. He dealt with it like a man. And if, he, if you were somebody that he couldn't deal with, he cut you off and, and moved on to the next person but he never allowed himself to be disrespected. This is where we are. So you have to watch these folks who consider themselves, who are telling you they're thoughtly pontificating on whether or not he had a thousand dollars in the bank or not. The man on a regular had a $120,000 watch on that everybody could see, period. This is where we are. So why even be that petty? Why not let this man just rest in peace? If you have a problem with, his 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 teachings or his his methodology attack that don't attack the man personally what kind of human what kind of man are you especially black men now i might not be able to say anything to these ladies they're mad at him some of them cuz you fit the profile you are what did what did he say you are big shirley i get why your toes would feel stepped on okay but trust me kevin was as harsh as he was as harsh or harsher on men. I get why your feelings would be hurt. <clears throat> but the bottom line is the man spoke the truth. And whether you liked it or not, he came through with the medicine that he needed to come through with. And it's unfortunate that he was not able to spread that cure, administer that cure to each and every person. But the formula is out there. And what we can't do and what we won't do is allow things to revert back to where they were. The truth is now out there. So y'all hit the KS button, man, and if you appreciate Kevin Samuels and what he did while he was here, hit the KS button. That's what I need you guys to do. KS for the legacy of Kevin Samuels. Do you, you guys see this happening? You know damn well some of y'all gave $1,000 to Kevin Samuels last week. You know damn well he got more than $1,000 in his bank account. But why are they running with that? And what is, what's up with this GoFundMe? Who is, where is this? It's like they're just pulling things out of nowhere to imply that this man was broke. 
And they're doing it so that you say, oh, well, he must have failed. Therefore, I'm not going to listen to him anymore. He, his credibility is shot. How can you be an image consultant and you're advocating all of this and, and what? You broke. So it makes you not look up to him. That's what they're trying to do to this man. They tried it in his lifetime. Tried to lose. Oh, he's gay. Not, no evidence at all. Man's been married to none of the women that he was married to are saying anything. No women he ever dated anything. Nobody's showing up out the woodwork. <clears throat> saying, oh yeah, I, I was I was the dude with it. none of that. Just straight up lies. Because it's a playbook that they use for black men. This is a playbook. If they can't get you with this, they can't take your money, they can't allege you gay, and they put you in a dress and parade you on the on the TV screen. That's what they do. It's a playbook. Don't y'all see the playbook? And now they got these so-called Negro intellectuals doing the same thing. So are they really your friend? Are these your leaders? You have a poor lot of leaders. If these are your intellectuals, right? Your intellectuals are now, instead of dissecting Kevin Samuel's thought process and incorporating it into their, their teaching, oh, they just go, oh, well, yeah, he only had $1,000. Some of y'all only got $1,000 in your bank accounts. <laughs> some of y'all some of y'all are broke as a, 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 a rocking chair on the back porch. And you talking about his thousand dollars? Let me see your thousand dollars. Let me see what your bank account looking like. That's what I want to know before you start complaining about uh, 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 pontificating over uh, Kevin Samuel's money. The hypocrites and black people. These are your thought leaders. The, the these same black men who are willing to attack another black man in public. These are the people that you listen to. These are the people that you 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 take advice from. This is where you get your news from. Some pe people who specifically have demonstrated that they don't give two shakes of a lamb's tail about you. This is who you want. These same people who benefit from the status quo, who didn't like seeing this man rise up from the grassroots from somewhere in the corners of YouTube and become a nationwide and worldwide phenomenon. This who was willing to show his face to the people so the people could see him. They're attacking him, one of us. Who didn't go through the who didn't get all the stamps of approval from 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 the, from the uh, different institutes and, and 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 institutions of of the dominant society. Oh, no. Oh, we got to get rid of we got to get rid of this guy. Oh, no. This guy. Oh, no, we can't have him around here. He's making us look bad. We got our college degrees in the 80s and the, in the 90s and everything's changed since then, right? And then you got these guys on the internet like Obsidian and O'Shea Duke Jackson and who else? Mediocre tutorials and review and the lead attorney. The lead attorney makes more money than most partners in law firms. And that's saying something. Shout out to the lead attorney. So we're going to keep this going. And there's no way you're going to stop it. You didn't like Kevin Samuels. We got people way uh, uh, rougher than him coming along. And they're not going to hold back on you. So you didn't like what he had to say about the social setting. Well, wait till you get hold of these politics that's coming up out of the black manosphere. You're really not going to like that. What do you start feeling the effect of black men saying, no, nah, I'm not voting for you unless you give me some tangibles. That's what's going to happen. And that, so you're going to actually, you want, you actually want something in exchange for your vote. That's what's going to happen. And these same intellectuals that are willing to attack a black man, right? This, these same intellectuals who, who are saying, oh my God, we, well, where did this come from? It came from the same place as Kevin Samuels came from. It's the same. There's a, there's a change of foot. There's a change of foot. And it doesn't matter what you do. There's always going to be somebody coming up behind the next one. We know Brother Kevin Samuels is gone on. He's died. He's passed away. But there are more. This this 
this machine that they call the black manosphere, this, this, uh, this, this, this brain that's called the black manosphere is not going anywhere. It's going to be here. The BGS Ibmores are still here. Where it all came from, it's still here. We all hold these same beliefs. So you're going to have to deal with us. All you're doing now by attacking our black brother is letting us know not only are you our intellectual adversary, but you are damn, damn near our enemy. You attacking a dead black man who can't defend himself? See, I don't give relationship advice. I never did. Anybody who comes to my page recognizes I don't give relationship advice. This is not what I'm doing. This is not what I do. I'm simply here today to defend my friend. There's a reason why he wanted me around him in his last days. There's a reason why we, we became friends over the past two or three years. If you're a spiritual person or not, recognize that the spirit understands. And there's a reason that I was brought around him because this is what I do. I'm here to protect my friend and his reputation because unlike many of you, what I know is if you're willing to attack and tear down one black man, you'll be tearing down the 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 next black man who comes along. And I'm not having it. See, I am my brother's keeper. I'm not like you all. I operate by a code, a code that was reinforced in me growing up in South Central Los Angeles. This is my side over here. And I don't care if you don't like my side or not. This is still my side and I'm going to protect my side. And that was my brother and he was on my side. So you're not going to disrespect my brother in his death. You may disagree with his philosophies. You may disagree with his teachings and what he said, and that's fair. But what you won't do is attack him personally. What you won't do is try to emasculate my brother now that he's gone by saying he's dead, that, that he died broke, or that his family needs a GoFundMe account. That's not going to happen. That's a personal attack. If you don't like what he said about Women who are overweight need to lower their standards. That's fine. You can attack that. Y'all can debate that. We got a hundred other dudes here in the black manosphere who will, who will challenge you on that. Some are way worse or harder to deal with than Kevin Samuels. But what you won't do is attack my brother, besmirch his character, saying he, he, he died with a hooker. That's a goddamn lie from hell. Pontificating on who the woman was. I hope she sues y'all pants off. I hope she takes everything she can from you guys. I hope she does. This, this woman who Kevin had been contemplating a relationship with who had begun talking months beforehand. And you saying she's a, this is, this is, you're trying to attack her and who she is so that you can do what? Destroy my brother's legacy. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a scandal where there is none so that you can do what? Undermine his credibility. And that's dirty, especially coming from black people who are supposed to be intellectuals. Had, had, had you have it, if, if you could have it your way, he died in, in, in messing with a, a lady of the night, uh, broke uh, <laughs> with an apartment in his baby mama name, right? Or in his mama name. This is what you would have this, these folks believe about my black. And these are black people pushing this narrative. And that's a goddamn shame and all those are lies from hell. And so in defending my friend, I'm going to, as long as you fighting, as long as you throwing those narratives out there, I'm going to be right here on, on, the, on the wall, sniping at you. That's what I'm going to do. I'll be right here until this fight is over. And when you back down, I'm going to back down. But, but recognize when I back down, there's going to be 15 or 20 more, just like Kevin Samuels or worse, pulling up right behind me. That's where we at. See, I'm not the relationship dude. I'm just Uncle D. You understand? But to me, Kevin was a friend. He was a comrade. He was also a mentor. But the crazy thing is, Kevin would tell you is, I was also his mentor. Just like I studied him, he studied me and he knew who I was when he brought me around. Matter of fact, the man hooked me up with my fiance. He knew exactly what I needed. I just wish that he had had a chance 
to really work on that relationship with the young lady that he died in the presence of, and he could have what I have. And that's a stable, loving family life that he always wanted. See, Kevin Samuels was looking for brothers. How do I know? I had personal conversations with him. He talked about how he pledged by himself. He talked about how he grew up as an only child. He talked about how it was lonely at the top. He was looking for comrades. He was looking for brothers. And he finally managed to surround himself by like-minded men. You guys remember that picture? MTR on the left. Lead attorney next to him. I'm next to lead attorney and Kevin Samuels on the far right. You remember that picture? He had finally found men that he enjoyed being around, like-minded men. And I was one of that group that he chose. So I'm not going to let my friend down, even in death. Because that's not the type of man I am. And that's not the type of man he is or he was. But his legacy continues. But you all won't besmirch his legacy, not while I'm on this wall. This is where we are. This is why I'm doing this. I'm not acting as the family's attorney. I'm only a spokesperson. And at this time, I'm not speaking on behalf of the family. This is me speaking on my behalf, speaking on behalf as a friend of Mr. Kevin Samuels. That's all I am right now, a friend. And, and anyone who would sit around and let other people destroy, other people destroy the legacy of their friend, you're not a real friend. That's not the type of person that we want. Those are not the type of men that we want in the black community, in the black community. We have those men. We have them. And many of them are your thought leaders. With no scruples, no morals, no code, nothing. Just talking heads. Talking heads trying to convince you of some foolishness that you know didn't work. This is where we are. Now, for those of you guys who love Kevin Samuels, I want you to take solace in this fact. And I want you to hear me out. All of you, this is for everybody. This is for his black fans, his white fans, his Hispanic fans, his Asian fans. Those of you guys who've hit me up from South Africa. Those of you guys who've hit me up from the UK. All around the world, Canada, Jamaica, South America. This is a conversation for all of you. All this negative, all this negativity that this man is enduring right now after his death. Recognize that America is a very unique place. Martin Luther King died one of the most hated men in America. You probably didn't know that. He died one of the most hated men in America. White folks thought he was a troublemaker. Black folks thought he was a, well, let me say this. White folks thought he was an uppity Negro. And black folks thought he was a, 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 a a troublemaker. But now, 40, 50 years later, you see a street name after Martin Luther King in pretty much any town in, in the United States where there are black folks. Malcolm X, he went from this right wing, radical, militant to people making movies about him and wearing hats and said X hats. And now he's one of the most beloved figures in, 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 in the world. But he died one of the most hated men in the world. Some folks thought he betrayed the Honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad. Other black folks just thought he was a crazy Negro. White folks said he was a, a, a white people hater, a racist, a white man, a racist, a black, black racist. But now you see he's a beloved figure. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys is this vitriol and hate that, uh, and even, even Tupac Shakur, when Tupac died, the police were looking for him. He was a thug and, you know, all these, other, and now look at people love him all around the world. This is what's going to happen. At some point, these haters are going to subside. At some point, the legend of Kevin Samuels will become bigger than his own life and it will transcend uh, just this country. At some point, this will happen. 
at some point, the critics will back down. They'll go on to somebody else who's easier to pick on. But that's not, that hasn't happened right now. But what we have to do in order so that this narrative, this pervasive narrative, this pervasive narrative that Kevin Samuels died broke and all these other things, we have to fight back against that now. So I want you to fight back against it with truth. I want you to let them know. I want you to call these so-called intellectuals out and call them the fools that they are. These publications, I want you to point out the fact that it's too early to tell, isn't it? And that doesn't seem right. Tell them you gave him $50 two or three weeks ago. How could he be broke? What about those $10,000 suits he was wearing? How can he only have $1,000 in his pocket? What about that paid them two paid for Mercedes Benz uh, that he has? Can somebody sell that and get a half a million? What do you mean he only had a thousand? Hit the K, hit the KS button for the legacy of Kevin Samuels. I want you to use these facts to go ahead and fight back against these people who are spreading these disparaging lies. Now that you know the whole point, you get it, you understand. They're simply trying to emasculate this black man. There's several ways to do it. Now that you know what their end game was, and let me tell you something about Kevin Samuels, man, that I learned. And I'm still now, you know, when people die, you begin to relive all the conversations you had. Kevin always said this. He said what? About your goals. What are your goals? You know, what are your outcomes? Kevin would show you the outcome, and you wouldn't know, like, okay, this is the outcome? Yeah, and you, it's your job to figure out how to get there. You, you know, with him, as far as I, I, my job is to set up the infrastructure to get the outcome. So, you know, in this situation, the outcome is emasculate another black man, i.e. Kevin Samuels. So, you know where they're trying to go. They tried to he's gay. That didn't work. Now they're trying to he's broke. That didn't work. OK, that's not going to work. This is what they're trying to do. So, you know what they're trying to do. Go ahead and call them on it. I've given you the ammunition. Take this message. Share it. Talk about it. Talk about it with your friends. You 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 can use anything I say and, and use it as your own. I don't mind. I talk, I recognize that talk, talking points are for everybody, okay? Feel free to take mine. You don't even have to give me credit for it. I'm not one of these egotistical self, uh, 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 egotists that exist out. That's not what I do, okay? Feel free to take my talking points. But in the meantime, I want you to use them to fight and help defend the legacy of Kevin Sanders. If you're going to do that, hit the number one button. If you promise to, when you see these trolls, hit the number one button. Please do that for me. I need y'all to do that. If you promise to help fight back, do that. Now, again, I'm not a relationship expert. You know, I'm not, I can't replace, no one can replace Kevin Sanders. Definitely not me. Okay, I'm a I'm a I'm a warrior at best. <laughs> okay. I'm a fighter at best. Okay, that's where I'm at. I can't do it for you. But there are other men out here who are brilliant, okay, that that, that are on YouTube that you can listen to. Um find them, listen to them, learn as much as you can from them. But what I'm not going to do and what you shouldn't do. Is let them, and matter of fact, you can still listen to Kevin Samuel's stuff. Listen to his stuff. Do all that. You, it's there for you. It's there and it's timeless. But the main thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we defend his legacy. And we can't let these haters keep talking reckless about him and think they're not going to have to pay a price. And that is conversation. You make them put up or shut up. You make them explain themselves. That's what I want y'all to do, man. All right? But uh, either way, uh, Thank you all. And remember, we're going to have the memorial service, the online memorial service for Mr. Kevin Samuels in the very near future. Join the page, uh, subscribe to the channel, and you'll get notification of it. All right. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, and you'll get notification of it. I appreciate y'all doing that now. It makes life a lot easier for me because um, I'm having to put up all these posts and whatnot. Um, but either way, I appreciate y'all. God bless y'all. Thank you, man. I love you. And man, you know, hit the KS button, man, if you miss Brother Kevin Samuels. And again, you know, this is what being a good friend is about. 
You know, you can't let other people talk bad about your friend. You can't call yourself a friend to somebody. And then when they're no, no, no longer able to defend themselves, not be there and willing to defend them. And that's what being a good black man, being a good brother is about. That's what I'm doing here. You know, and I hope you guys would join in with me. If you consider Kevin Samuels your brother, whether you white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Martian, uh, uh, whether you, 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 you blue, purple, or made of gold. If you consider Kevin Samuels somebody that taught you something, make sure you hit these trolls up in their comment section, right? And when you see them saying those horrible things about him, you make sure you challenge them on that. Don't let them get away clean with that. I don't care who it is. You know, some of you brothers are scared of these lovely ladies. Kevin wasn't scared of these lovely ladies. Matter of fact, you when they come on the show, no problem. If he saw them in public, they didn't even say they was as timid as the church mice when they ran up on Kevin in public. Y'all don't know, Kevin's about six foot four. You see what I'm saying? When nobody run, the man had two black belts in two different forms of martial arts. And Kevin's hands were bigger than mine. He, you know, very peaceful man, but I could re recognize he might bust you in your eye if you got out of line, you know, but he was a good man, a good brother, uh, never had a criminal record, no issues with crime, none of that, you know, great dad, all of this is what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? And so what we don't want to do is we don't want to allow this person whose reputation, we don't want to allow that reputation to be besmirched, especially a black man. We don't want that. But either way, this is Uncle D. I love you guys. As I always say at this time, um, you know, I'm out.